Hello, everybody. Very much welcome to Colonial Repercussions 5, the Namibian case. I just uh, want to say that uh, we are very proud of uh, having a cultural institution in the center of Berlin at uh, Pariser Platz, uh, uh, but what we call in German uh, Kollateralschaden is if there is a political demonstration, Fridays on Future, for example, we have a, a different kind of problems, but I, I think it's important to, to keep this place with the culture in the center of our country. Uh, dear Katarzyna Wilga Skulimowska, dear Wolfgang Kalek, dear guests from all over the world, very much welcome in the Academy of the Arts and in the center of Berlin. I'm very, very thankful to, to the partners because it's not just the Academy of the Arts. It's mainly the initiative of the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights, um, which uh, started um, a discussion with us in 2016. And we are talking about a long-term um, process and project in which we try to bring up uh, the questions which are connected to colonial injustice uh, to the present times and to, to fight for, for a change not only in the thoughts but only in the actions. I thank also very much the Federal Agency for Civic Education who was in the boat from the beginning, especially Thomas Krüger who just can't be here uh, this afternoon but he will join us in the evening, and the Goethe Institute, which is also a, a very important partner in the whole project, especially the platform Colonial Repercussions 4 in Windhoek and Swakopmund. Um, this march uh, was uh, only possible because of the cooperation uh, with the Goethe Institute. You see a documentary photo work from Ishmukane Aguila. Uh, a photographer based in um, Berlin um, at um, Hochschule Weißensee. And uh, it's very, very important to bring in also our perspective, um, in this case by a South American or Latin American artist. Uh, Ishmukane, are you here? Please just, uh, please stand up. So, so, hello, very much welcome. Yeah. Currently, she is working on a photo documentary regarding German colonialism and the genocide, genocide against the Nama and Herero. The title of her work, Even Friday's Sun Sets, refers to a Nama phrase. It refers to a specific Friday during the Nama German War and expresses hope in seemingly hopeless times. This work will be ready or will be finished um, next year, and I, I think we try to, to have an exhibition together with her. I just have three points. The discussion in the Academy started in 2016 with a conference on memory and justice. Cultural memory and justice is a crucial topic and a crucial subject for the Academy, who has been changed a lot in the period between 33 and 45, so that the topic of exile, the topic of justice, the topic of cultural memory is a crucial field of our work. Confronted with the fact that we will not be able to find any solutions for the future of Europe without the acknowledgement and the reflections of the colonial past, we say, also, as an institution in the academy, we have to take care for this blind uh, point in our history. And that means that we have to start, first of all, in Germany. We have to do our homeworks in our institutions and in our knowledge systems, in the archives, in our philosophy. Because there is a deep inscription of colonialism and injustice in our cultural memory also in what we call the European Enlightenment. 
in our civilization, in our philosophy, which is not present in our conscious today. And if I say our conscious, I speak about politics, social science, law, and education. Secondly, I think we have to take care for our responsibilities in the country which has been confronted by German colonial power. I'm talking about exploitation, occupation, dehumanization, genocide, about the destruction of a, of a, of a cultural mem memory of the people. This ruptures means a collective trauma which is always present in our present times, in the bodies, in the families, in the actual history. And I'm not talking about the history of the others. I'm talking, and this is very crucial for me, about a common narrative, a common narrative for the future. In this case, a common narrative which joins Namibian people and German people in a very deep sense. I'm talking about our common cultural memory. Our working method, and this is the third point, is an unusual parallelism of questions which are coming from the law side and questions which are coming out from human, uh, human science and, uh, and the arts. And this dialogue was able because we are working together with the European Center for Constitu Constitutional and Human Rights. And we bring in with our archives, with our members, with our institution, the side of the arts which is, they are dealing with the same problems, but in a quite different way. I would say in a, in a soft area, in an area which a lot of narratives are coming out, which are dealing with the injustice and with the traumatization. And on the other hand, you have a very powerful instrument of change in political and in cultural political ways. Of course, Politicians are very afraid of this debate because it's not clear what does it mean for the future. But I think, and we have to fight for that, and we want to change that, that we have to take the responsibility and the power of our collaboration for the future. German history, of course, can't be sought without the Shoah, without the Holocaust. And the academy in between Pariser Platz, uh, a center of liberation, a center of freedom, and the monument uh, of the Holocaust on the other side, on the back side, is crucially connected to this history. Also, uh, I'm, I'm talking about a, a criticism of, of the arts themselves, because uh, on the front of our uh, house, uh, you have the inscription of the names of artists who has been uh, thrown out of the academy in the beginning of the 30s because of Jewish descendants because of communist positions. Very famous people like um, Heinrich Mann, Käthe Kollwitz, and a lot of other very, very important artists who are very fundamentally uh, uh, part of our cultural, of our common cultural memory. But the other thing is that this perspective on our history uh, does only make sense if we open it to the colonial question and this is not, many, many Germans say, okay, it's another heavy thing we have to care for. No, it's about the future. It's about a Europe which is open to the history and finds a way of developing a common history for the future. So these are my short uh, statements. Instead of, uh, I'm speaking for our president, uh, Janine Meerapfel, who couldn't be here also this morning or uh, this afternoon. She will come later. My name is Johannes Odenthal, and I want to give the, work, the word to Katagina, who is talking for the Goethe Institute. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Johannes Rodenthal, and, and thank you, Wolfgang Kalleck. But uh, most of all, thank you, um, all of the artists and activists coming from Namibia that are here today, and all the artists and activists from all over the, over the world, and, uh, and the public that managed to get uh, to the Academy of Arts. I'm really honored 
to be here and speak uh, in the name of uh, two people. Actually, Wolf Iro, the head of the culture department at, in Munich uh, at the Goethe Institute, and uh, Daniel Stöversan, the head of the Goethe Institute in Winduk, uh, that were uh, involved in uh, the previous uh, event that uh, we hosted in Winduk uh, from, of the co colonial re repercussions. Um, you might ask yourself uh, why I'm standing here as a representative of the Goethe Institute. Um, what is the role actually of the Goethe Institute in this context? And um, we are um, with our network of 160, almost 160 institutes and in 100 countries, it's a wide network. Um, it's deeply anchored uh, in the local civic societies. And our network, we see our network as our privilege. Um, and this privilege we need to question and we need to use these resources that we have as a facilitator and enabler. And um, this um, self-reflection of the institution and uh, how we see our role um, was developing through um, each and every event and exchange that we had with partners from the Global South, uh, with our partners, uh, lo our local partners, and it changed uh, the way of uh, working, uh, that we are working, and um, it changed the partners in Germany as well that we are working with, and I think it's quite important to stress it that uh, this dialogue that we are having locally uh, is somehow changing the uh, institutional la landscape in Germany as well. Um, but with this privilege that we have, um, we need to ask ourselves how our institution is working in this world of, uh, of uh, uh, global north privileges and in the context of the decolonization. Um, and we see, each, uh, see us, I mean, as an actor of the German foreign culture policy and educational policy uh, and civil society as well, uh, we have a special responsibility to make um, this uh, contribution to active questioning of the relationships between people, institutions and countries, um, and that this, um, these relations are based on equal rights and we should readjust them in a respectful way. Um, the consequences of colonialism, as Johannes mentioned, um, are um, actually uh, visible um, in all the affected countries. Uh, colonialism affects today uh, national languages, systems of law and knowledge, um, modes of production, economic conditions uh, and dependencies like extractivism, processes of climate change, and we're sitting here and people are protesting there around the corner, um, and climate justice is a very big uh, question, and the dealing with the colonial heritage, which is actually the most visible debate in Germany right now. So um, as a Goethe Institute, um, we recognize this responsibility that arises from the past injustice, and in this context of the Namibia conference uh, today, especially uh, in the context of the genocide, in Namibia, and we want to focus our work um, on shaping uh, the future and promoting future uh, designs or future visions that, um, that uh, come from the formerly colonized uh, countries without forgetting the past and working on this past. So um, our, um, how, how do we do it? Um, mostly by um, trying to create space for uh, intellectuals and cultural workers from the formerly colonized uh, countries um, in Germany and worldwide, establish platforms for exchange uh, within these countries and the neighboring countries, so this South-South dialogue that um, is quite important in our work uh, in residency work and in and cultural projects that we do. And, uh, and try to make these voices visible 
in Germany. Um, um, this is like the part that is quite important from our point of view, which is the field of cultural education in Germany, to bring this uh, discussion that is being uh, held in abroad uh, in the countries uh, of origin and um, make this uh, discussion present in Germany as well. And the art has a special role here to play and I would like to invite you to the um, exhibition that is uh, in the uh, downstairs uh, on uh, minus three uh, level and to have a look how art can actually influence uh, our feelings and, uh, and make some things maybe more visible than, uh, than the talks uh, themselves. So, um, just going to the, to the point, um, we, we see each other like we want to be the place that, um, I mean, to be the institution that joins the forces with the actors um, who make the lost culture knowledge visible, that produce the decolonized narrative and the new dynamic into talking about art, talking about culture, talking about history and talking about education as well, and the society, of course. So it's like a broad and long-term perspective. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Uh, we are conscious that on the, this way, we have to still have in the backs of our minds um, what our institution is and self-reflect how, how we are working in this environment, in this worldwide environment. And, this, uh, uh, and how our privileged position is in the whole network that we are working with. And these questions we are going to um, address as well in an event that we are planning for June next year. Um, and the, the idea behind this event is to bring the works of arts from the countries and to not to start with the topics, but start to, talk, to have, uh, start looking at the works that are being produced abroad and um, what are the themes and what are the ideas that are coming from the works of art into this uh, discussion about colonization. So I'm really um, honored to be here today and to be able to listen to you because this is how we see our position uh, in this debate to listen and to note and to learn. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to share two feelings with you, anger and hope, anger. Um, when we started this series of colonial repercussions in January 2018, we had invited Esther Muyanke and Bernardo Swartboy, Herrero and Nama representatives, and they had been talking here um, um, to us about the 150-year-long history of crimes and German ignorance about these crimes. And uh, they uh, invited us at this particular panel in January to, come, to go to, to Namibia, which we then did in August last year. And what we, excuse me? No, we were in August last year. I mean, you were in March, we were in March as well, and I will come to that. Um, thank you. But um, we were there in August as well, and um, we had, um, we had and, and, um, um, Katarzyna just mentioned the, um, the exhibition of, or installation of Isabel Katiavivi uh, in, the, in the downstairs. Um, we visited the, the Nami we, first we visited the Memorial Day, the commemoration of the Waterberg battle 115 years ago. Um, the Waterberg, full of fertile land, full of land with cattle, all in the hands of the whites. The whites who had robbing this land 115 years ago, and it's still in the hand of the whites. The whites now complaining that some people are raising uh, the, the issue of 
uh, of the right to land because there is no way f to live for the black for the black majority to live um, um, from the land because they are only in possession of unfertile land. But the whites are complaining about that somebody raises this question 115 years. They are arguing we lived 115 years peaceful together. Why can't we just reconcile? <laughs> no, we heard that. We heard that, and we're still hearing this kind of complaints. So. We go from the Waterberg Memorial Day, where, by the way, we were the only white people. No one, no one from German official institution visited the memorial. No one, no one. It was absolute ignorance. And then, when, 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 when uh, a, a month later, we had here um, the restitution of some, some robbed artifacts and uh, some human remains. And there, everybody was there. The Germans, it was in the Gendarmenmarkt, they showed their face, but in Namibia, none of them showed up. And then we moved on from the Waterberg to the desert, where General von Trotter had announced the fam infamous um, ex extermination order against the Herero community. And you go there, and instead of having constructed a memorial site, you just see an entrance, the entrance door, which is paid by the European Union. And then you drive around the answer store and you see the, 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 the territory and nothing is on it. Nobody was willing to pay anything for, 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 for the commemoration of, of that particular space. And so it's, it's Isabel Katja Vivi who brings the impression of, 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 the, of the place. And I have to say, I'm, I'm missing one thing and I told her already. She brings it in a much broader context because when the installation in, uh, in Windhoek, there, you go there, you enter there, and there is this James Baldwin quote, all your buried corpses now begin to speak. It's an artist who, who made the corpses speak and it's the activist who invites us and who come here. So I'm happy to welcome Ida Hoffmann and Sima Leupert. Who are now for decades long demanding, it's not, not so big that the Germans acknowledge the genocide. How can you not acknowledge that? That the Germans apologize for the genocide. How can you not apologize for that? And the Germans pay reparation. This is a difficult question for a number of reasons because the genocide cannot be repaired. It's, it's really difficult, but still they could start with something. They didn't start with anything. And the, the person who formulated this in the right way was Makau Mutua, who opened our conference in Namibia, now in March this year. Um, so Makau opens, opens his speech with the words, will the Germans ever accept black Namibians as equal human beings. Will the Germans ever accept them um, as equal human beings? I mean, you could raise this question, you could put uh, other than the Germans as well, the, all the old colonizer nations, but here we talk about the Germans. And then he says, the answer lies in the way how Germany deals with the question of reparation. Nothing more to say. This. So we are now 115 years later, I think four years after Germany and Namibia started so-called negotiations about acknowledgement, apology, and reparation, and they're stuck. They hide, be they hide behind bureaucratic and legal arguments. It's a shame. It's just the same, and it's a scandal, and it's, we, we, had, we said it last year several times, we said it this year, and we are going to say that until at least a little bit of reparation and a serious apology and an acknowledgement is spoken out. It's also a shame that we as lawyers um, have to talk about the decolonization of law because one should think 70 years after the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and with all the Human Rights Treaty, it shouldn't be an issue, but it is an issue. It's deeply connected with the demonstration outside with a climate change situation and uh, a demonstration, and our guests Joshua Castellino and also Jesse de Sosa, whom I welcome very much, will talk about this. They will talk about this because the civil, the idea of civilizing mission, the Europeans as the civilizers of the world is still alive. It's still alive, and you would see it. And, and Joshua will present some of the examples. So the idea, the the, the colon, to, to tackle colonialism today is not only 
and this is something very serious which still need to be done, not only talking about colonial crimes, it's also understanding history to understand today's realities. And that is, that is desperately needed. Also because, and this is, was the second title of our conference last year, post-colonial injustice. We have to deal with a lot of post-colonial injustice. The same Marco Mutua was talking about the savior's attitude of Western human rights organization. Now we can also include and some of environmental uh, um, organizations who still think that ha they have the right to regard themselves as superior and civilize the rest of the world. Another speaker at the January conference made the right point. If you really mean it, if you're serious with tackling colonialism, you have to talk about property. You have to talk about property. You have to challenge the world economic order, which is basically an in order, injustice, complete inequality, and you have to challenge the power of corporations, which then shows, which Yen brings me to the, to the, to the, to the other feeling I want to share with you. The other feeling is hope. It's really hope because um, one has to acknowledge that 20 years ago nobody spoke about the genocide in, in Namibia and it was due to activists like, like Ida, like Sima, like Esther, but also our friends from, from post-colonial Christian and Israel who brought this issue um, and it was, a, it was, a, hard, it was hard, a hard struggle to convince people that this is still an issue and they brought it on the agenda and this is why we are sitting here. This is why we are sitting here and this is for me me, it's something which really gives me hope. It gives me hope that we have established a certain conversation between activists, artists and lawyers, a necessary, overdue, much too late, but there is something going on. And it's going on despite of the ignorant attitude of both governments. And that is something we should also be a little bit proud of. And we have to acknowledge that we came forward some steps. Of course, we want more. We definitely want more. And this is what this conference is going to be about. Thank you very much. And now... <clears throat> I would like to invite Joshua Castellino and Sima Leupert to the to the to the stage.